welcome to Health Coaching TV. Hi, Kate. Hi. Hey, so we've got, I've got with me today, Kelly Brown. And um, Kel is, first and foremost, as she shared with me, a mum. And also, uh, uh, before becoming a mum, um, had a life coaching business. So she's the mother of Bo, who's three and a half, and Amika, who's eight months now. Yep. Well, thanks for having me too, Kate. It's lovely to be here with you and your subscribers as well. I basically with Bo, it was about um, probably when he was about six months, I was following the, um, the Sally Fallon book, Nourishing Traditions. Mm -hmm. And um, I decided to give him some egg yolk. Mm -hmm. um, and initially he was really good on it for about three weeks. Um, and then he got constipated. And so I went back to the breast for about two weeks. And then when I reintroduced, reintroduced the egg, um, he had a gastrointestinal response. So about half an hour later, lots and lots of vomiting. And because he was so young, that was, it was a lot for his body to handle. And he was sort of comatose um, from, from that experience. It was pretty frightening. We went to the hospital and, um, yeah, it was pretty much pinpointed for the egg. At the time, my husband had just come back from Hong Kong and had gastro. So I wasn't sure because I'd introduced egg before that it was definitely the egg. Yeah. So I thought maybe it, it could have been the gastro. So at nine months, I tried another really small amount of egg yolk and exactly the same thing happened again. So that was sort of the beginning of um, my journey at realising that um, there was some dysbiosis or something not going on right for his gut. Then at about, I'd probably say... 15 months something like that after about four or five months we we went to hong kong we came back his immune system just wasn't for someone like myself who was feeding him quite well um and he was taking to food and he was still on the breast um i fed him right up until he was um 26 months uh, breastfeeding and um uh, yeah, his immune system just wasn't great. He got about a, a really mild case of hand, foot and mouth and then it turned into a secondary infection about a month later, a thing called Giannotti Crosti, it's called. Mm -hmm. Sounds like an Italian dessert more than a disease. Yeah, and that was like a rash um, that can kind of translate and be different all around the body. Um, and so it's something just didn't click for me. And I think that's when I first got in contact with you actually was um, when that kind of confusing sort of, you know, I'm feeding him so well I'm not sure what's going on with his immune system. Is there something I'm missing? And that's when you were like, well, let's, you know, look at hair analysis. Let's look at stool testing um, and, and kind of get more of a, a round picture um, of what's going on for him. I then moved to um, going to a naturopath to get a, a PCR test. Um, so that a multiplex PCR stool test. Um, and that showed up that he had a, a parasite. Um, Dan Tamiba fragilis. Yeah. So what prompted you to seek help? Was it concerning you? Did you kind of instinctively know? Was there something? Totally, totally knew that something wasn't right. Um, just intuitively as a mum who was doing everything she could in her power to know what was best for him nutritionally mm -hmm. and knowing that the gut has such an impact on the rest of the body. I just knew there was a missing piece yeah. and um, I wasn't sure what that was. And obviously like parasites weren't in my, you know, my number one realm that that's what my two year old son has, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it had been from, you know, from about 15 months to two where things just weren't, yeah. they weren't good for him. Yeah. And you took him to and talk. behaviorally and all of that sort of stuff, like developmentally, he was right on. You know, he was he walked a week before he's um, before he turned one. He was talking. He was full sentences by eighteen months. You know, like he was he was ahead of the game in that way. So I knew it wasn't pointing toward anything um, anything too um, disdainful in the gut. You know, because usually those two things, the gut and the brain, um, can have that have that relationship. What did you do, Cal? How did you approach it? Yeah. Well, initially um, I went, so I spoke with you. That was great. Um, and, and it was sort of time to get some tests done. Um, and I, you know, I wasn't even aware of the, all, the different types of tests. So it was great to have you to bounce off for that um, with the hair analysis and then moving into the stool analysis to just you know, really get a feel for where he was at. Um, so I went along to a naturopath. and. 
that's where I got the diagnosis for the parasite. Um, I was told in that meeting with this naturopath, so this is another reason and key thing for mums out there to really just um, tap in and touch into what feels right for you. Yeah. This was um, a naturopath. So I'm not at a doctor or anything like that. I'm, I'm sitting with a naturopath. And once um, we were told about the diagnosis, she prescribed um, a drug, metro, metronidinol or something like that, um, an antibiotic. And um, I asked her, I said, look, I, I, this isn't something I, I feel comfortable with. I don't want to go down the um, pharmaceutical way. Is there another way? And flat out, she said, no, no, this is the only way it can be treated. Um, and I said, well, have you treated a two-year-old before? It's quite young. Um, and is there a, she said, look, I haven't treated anyone that young before, but this is the only treatment I know. And I, I said, so it's guaranteed. And she said, no, I could have one bout and still come up with the um, positive for the parasite. Um, so we do another bout. And I was like, okay. And then is that, that guaranteed? She said, absolutely not. So um, it just, the one thing that kept running true to me was why would we treat the obviousness for him was he was symptomatic with his gut. Yeah. So why would I then go and treat his gut with antibiotics that are only going to take all the good guys? The good guys are already fighting for themselves in that belly. Um, so they're going to take the good guys with the bad guys. And so like how, if I have to go down that road, how can I support him better um, if we do have to go down that road, because at this stage I wasn't sure. Um, and this is obviously isn't the person that can support me in that way because she's offering a prescription drug with no other support so, or no other option. Can I just interrupt there? I guess yeah. it's very hard. You, you questioned the authority and the, the kind of expert advice that you will be given. Yeah. And it takes a lot to do that in my experience. Like really a lot, and especially when you've got um, your grandparents and partner who are seeing your two-year-old son clearly uncomfortable when he's passing stools because he was wearing nappies at that time. So he'd be over at people's houses and it'd be mum, 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 you know, like really uncomfortable. And, and when someone has told you this is the only course of treatment or if, they're, if, they, if people close to you are going off and doing their research and they're coming back and going, well, he needs to go on an antibiotic, that's the only course of treatment, um, you start to really question yourself and think well maybe I should just do this you know what can so much so that I went to the doctors with him and I got the prescription and um you know like I had never walked into a chemist to get it but I was definitely um you know paid for the appointment with a doctor and got the prescription and thought okay that's in my back pocket if if I'm wrong so I actually just put it out there and funnily enough we were at the time um hosting for an organic box um, weekly delivery. So people would come over to us and get their organic box and um, sort of like a co-op. Mm -hmm. And um, this woman came over and, and Bo had this sort of, mom, mom, this urgency again, you know, like uh, this is really uncomfortable. And this woman was sort of standing there and I was like, oh God, sorry, he's just got an uncomfortable belly. He's passing. And she said, oh, my daughter was quite similar and have you looked into maybe if he's got a parasite and I was like oh right yes he does and we got talking and she had seen a naturopath a local naturopath helped her daughter and her daughter was much older now and doing really well and so I just started to research this naturopath that she had said and yep her forte was parasites and um, gut dysbiosis and so I contacted her and we started the journey. Um, the whole way through you were sticking to the diet? I was yeah and actually during the protocol it was even more strict so I had just given birth to my second baby yeah. um, and we'd gone on a six-week basically you know, no fun diet. Um, so, and I was having to do everything from scratch. So I made a pumpkin and zucchini bread with almond meal. Um, that was pretty much in the fridge on the go all the time. So if he got really hungry, then that was something that we were doing. I just... I know. Yeah. Amazing job, Cal. And like, a, a, you know, a lot of work, and especially with a new baby. Yeah. But however, uh, I think, you know, the results have been worth it. And you know what's surprising is that I fretted and stressed so much about um, what it was going to be like because we had to be pretty strict for the first six to eight weeks and then we could start to introduce stuff. Mm. And actually, 
um, once you wrote, write that meal plan and you get yourself into it, it actually became easier for me with a baby because I, when I made the bread, I froze one lot of bread and there was another, you know, so I had snacks and he was never hungry and, you know, everything just like was, I knew what was coming next. And yeah. So where, where are you at now? Share the results that you have. Okay. Yeah. So then Bo got retested. So this is a year later after diagnosis. Um, no, he's, and he, you could really see that he was just starting to flourish from, um, once that protocol, that's the other thing I think as a mum, when you see that there's momentum and that they're shifting and you're just like, Oh my God, I was so right. You know, like celebrate, celebrate, celebrate his immune system now. I mean, this winter has been a whammy in Melbourne for a lot of people falling sick and his immune system, you know, he's been great. Um, and uh, I think that's the number one for, for parents, you know, if it's not the stools that are symptomatic, if there's, if there's a lot of colds like back to back or um, infections back to back, it, it's really important to go to the gut. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally, totally agree. Which I think is another thing to really um, empower other mothers to do is to experiment a little bit, take notes, um, see what's working and what's not working for your kids because you know, a naturopath doesn't have to, um, or a doctor, go to bed with, with your baby, you know? Yeah, um, I know, and I honestly believe that as mums, we know our kids better than anybody. Absolutely. How did you manage it all? Because it's pretty hard not to, you know, lose it, break down. Yeah. I mean, it, you're sleep deprived with a newborn. Yep. With changes happening within the kitchen. I mean, it, amazing yeah strategies that you employed personally just to retain your state of mind and yeah i think partnership is amazing um i have a husband who works from home um so if i am really losing it um and the kids are too i i can sort of walk into the office put baby in his arms for five minutes and just go and take a shower um so i'm really blessed to have that um, walking you know pop her in the stroller get him on the bike get out in the fresh air um that's the the you know if anything's going crazy that's the number one and nourishment things you like like i love um i love a a, a golden milk right you know a turmeric latte nice. so i just I'll, I'll just make sure that i've got a paste ready to go and if i'm feeling like really like oh my god i cannot take another minute yeah. it's like okay just go put this just go put some milk and a bit of paste and mix it and okay you know <laughs> whatever that is for someone well, it's taking time for you, isn't it? Yeah. Living yeah. time for you. I know. So, so important. Um, and not always that easy to do, even that, is it? No, it's not. No. And knowing that, you, knowing that you've got other mothers, Kate, like that's why the service that you're offering is so essential because, you know, I, I would literally say, Kate, I've got this and you've I've got five minutes on Friday, call me, you know? And to have that, and we've never met each other, yeah. To have that is just like, oh, soul nourishing, just for another mother to acknowledge like, yeah, this is hard, yeah. you know, this is hard, but you're doing it. Yeah, totally. I know it's, uh, it's so important. And, uh, and I think, I, I think I'll, there's such a tendency to do it on our own, isn't there? You know, um, whether it's something that's instilled or you've inherited from our own parents, but um, just doesn't, doesn't work. Doesn't no, it doesn't. And it's the same thing with handing your power over to, to the medical world or whatever that is too. If something doesn't feel right or feel good to you, then you really just have to keep questioning and keep asking questions, keep asking questions, keep asking questions, because the answers will show themselves. Make time to be in the kitchen. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, and it can be a lot simpler than we, um, than we make it out to be. I remember um, before, I, I think I was pregnant with Bowen and I think that's when I started being interested even more in nutrition and I started making my own broths. And before I made my first broth, I thought it was going to be the hardest, most weirdest thing to do. And, you know, like, what? Oh, I'm watching all these different videos and I'm like, really? It's that e easy? <laughs> okay, I'll give it a go, you know? And it really, if you've got a slow cooker, you just throw it all in and let it do its magic, you know? So I, I think just start, just start with one thing and no guilt, you know? I, I still, in the kitchen, I go, oh, I could do better. You know, I could be doing that chia pudding every day and I could be doing, you know, like the, there's so many things I could be doing that I'm not. Yeah. 
Um, and there's, as a mum, we're always going to have that little voice. So just start with, with one thing. Yeah. Um, and if that means getting an organic um, box delivered, like I get, I get my meat delivered, my organic meat delivered, and I get my, my um, fruit and veg delivered. I don't step into a supermarket. I haven't for a really long time. Um, so that's just me personally that I, and it comes to my door once a week. Awesome. And, um, and, and just having those staples on hand in the freezer pantry. Yeah. So that there is always something to yep. create. Totally. And then you're not having to worry. It's seasonal. It's local. It's like that, all of that's all of that stuff of walking into a supermarket and like, Oh, you know, where do I start? I mean, there's so many other elements to that, isn't it? Bringing the kids into the kitchen, that connection with food, um, totally family together, um, you know, absolutely. And, and on that point, you know, when Bo was knew we could have egg again i said what's the one thing you want to do and he said i want to make a chocolate cake with egg. <laughs> and i was like okay cool mm -hmm. we've got a thermomix so plug for the thermomix because it's amazing when you've got kids mm -hmm. um and he literally he just watched a video of another kid making a chocolate cake and it was you know gluten-free dairy-free all of that stuff um and he he just made it like crack the eggs, put in the, mum, is this right? Is that, yeah, yeah, you're doing good. You know, three years old, made his own cake. <laughs> what else you'd like to share, Cal? I just think that talk to other mums that you trust, <laughs> um, like, like you, you know, like Kate, um, people that, that you feel resonate with, with what really is intuitively going on for you mm -hmm. and um, be patient, you know. Um, be really patient with yourself and, and with the process because I think that's the thing that I've learned. You know, it took us a year. Yes. Uh, and look, I guess, Cal, one, some people might be thinking, gee whiz, that sounds like an expensive year. <laughs> you know, naturopaths, supplements, you know, yep. me, the whole thing. So yep. what, um, what, what do you say about that? Yeah, it's, it's a really good point. Um, it's an investment, but I think it's seeing Bo now, and at the other end, it's an investment that's well worth it. Um, your kids' health and their immune system and their nervous system, for me as a parent, that is, um, it, it's, it's paramount. It's number one, giving them a foundation because who knows, they'll like grow up and who knows what they'll be eating and where they'll be going, well, you know. And life throws things at us, doesn't it? Whether it's exams, um, yeah. other sickness when we travel, um, yeah. relationships, yeah. like even the stress of going through teenage years and hormones going crazy. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's investment that, you know, uh, we may have had to have another way if he continued with a poor immune system, visits to the doctors, whatever it was, you know, it's actually a... I feel like that with my organic deliveries, you know, they're an investment that I make for his health, um, for the family's health, so that we don't have to spend the money in other ways later on. Yeah. Well, Cal, it's an awesome job what you've done. And I, you can, I really think you've changed the course of his future health and well-being yep. and vitality. Yep. And potentially his children as well. So <laughs> it is, it, and you're right. It's an investment in the next generation. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, really get people in your corner, like I say, that you trust and, not, and thank you for being that person for us along the way. It's um, been so, so helpful. Oh, well, thank you, Cal. I mean, I absolutely loved working with you and mm -hmm. I mean, the, the admire the way you've approached it and, and taken it on. And I That's think great. also is that with Bo, cause he was younger, you've been able to get results a little quicker too. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point too. I guess if you found things a little later, it might take even more time and not get frustrated with that. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for your time, Cal. Really Thanks, Kate. Get back to your family. Thank you. Lots of love. Thanks, Kate.